Matthew chapter 4 verse 23 And Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases among the people and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all kinds of sicknesses and all kinds of diseases among the people and let us open again chapter 9 in the same Matthew and we go there to verse 35 chapter 9 Matthew We are Mala always thirty five. It's the same thing that is written, but I want us to read it because it put words in in a different form. Then Jesus went about all cities. There it was said Galilee went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Let us pray. Father, thank you for the word. Thank you for giving us this word today. Speak to us, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I want to speak to you about a heading of saying, Nothing is impossible with God, or He can do anything. Let me say so. God can do anything. For with him nothing is impossible. Now what we have read in the book of Matthew, we are hearing a story of Jesus. What he was going around doing to the lives of people. The Bible is saying Jesus was going around. In chapter 4 it says Galilee teaching in the synagogues. And in chapter 9, he said he went to the cities and villages doing the same thing. And as it goes down, it says, and what he was doing also, he was healing all kinds of diseases and sicknesses that were among people. In other words, the things that were a load or a burden to the lives of people, Jesus was taking it away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now we here we are finding Jesus doing the job that God has sent him to come on earth to do. Remember, I always say Jesus was the firstborn to our salvation. He's the one who started our salvation. Now when he came to earth, he was here to narrate, to show us how we are supposed to live or go about the issue of salvation. So that is why when he reached here on earth, he went to choose the twelve that were always working in him, with him so that wherever he went, they will see what he was doing. Praying, healing for people, delivering people, their sickness being taken away, all sorts of things being taken away. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now as Jesus was here on earth doing this, he was not doing it under his own authority. He was doing it under the authority of God. For the Bible says, God is the one who sended him to come on earth to come and die for us so that we can be children of God. Now, he was going around healing, praying, delivering, giving people things that they were in need of. 
There is a lot of things that the Bible has recorded that Jesus has done. There is a verse in the Bible that says, all the works of Jesus are not recorded. All of them, they are not recorded. But some have been recorded so that you and me, we can believe. Hallelujah. So now, this that has been recorded is an eye-opener to us so that we must understand that Jesus was going on healing people, delivering people, helping people, doing that which he saw it was a need in the lives of people so that people can live free lives. Can somebody say amen? amen. Where we have read in chapter 9 verse 36 said, when Jesus looked at the multitude, in other words, if Jesus could come here and stand where I'm standing, when he looks at you, the Bible said he will feel compassion to them. Why compassion to them? It is because Nana Le Murwalo, he was having a burden of healing, of delivering, of setting the people free so that people can live lives to the fullest. Hallelujah. Now, the Bible says, as Jesus was walking with his disciples day in and day out, he was going around cities, villages, places, healing people, praying for them and doing all sorts of things. Now, the authority that Jesus was having was the authority that was coming from God himself. In other words, remember God is the one who created heaven and earth. Hallelujah. Now, because God created heaven and earth, he has authority. And he created men and everything that is living on earth. So now, because Jesus was sent by God to come to earth, Jesus came with the authority that was coming, coming from the Father. So that when he comes to earth, he will take us back to where God wants us to be. If you are sick, you must be healed. If you have a disease, the disease must go. If you have a sickness, that sickness must go. If you have a leg, that leg must be covered. If you have a problem, that problem must be solved. That was the purpose of Jesus coming to earth. Hallelujah. Now, because we are living on earth, let me just explain a little bit this. We tend to forget the real reason of Jesus coming to earth. Hmm? We tend to Turn around the reason of his coming to earth. Now when I read the Bible, I have found out that for Jesus to come to earth, he was here to present salvation to us and so that we must live as free people. Not freedom democratically. Uh -uh. Freedom of living lives knowing that whatever that is troubling you, it is where it will end, but as long as Jesus is there in your circumference. Are you hearing me? In other words, children of God, we need Jesus in our circumference. Circumference is here close to me. I need Jesus. So that when Jesus is there, when Jesus is working, in your problem because he is there always in your circumference it means that your situation will change why because jesus is there hallelujah now our 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 situations our problems our troubles are not running away and getting away and going and away why because jesus is not there in our circumference i don't know if you understand what i'm trying to say Hallelujah. I get it. Really So now when Jesus is here in my circumference, more how feeling for things to happen in my life, it becomes so much easy. And I'll explain by saying this. That is why when Jesus reaches Galilee, every sick person, 
Every person who was having a disease, every person who was having a problem, every person who was demon possessed, every person who was every, as long as that person will move from where he or she is and come closer to Jesus, that situation must change. Hallelujah. Now, as children of God, in our own circumference, we need Jesus. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you need Jesus in your circumference. You need Jesus close to you. You need to abide with him. You need to stay with him. You need to always communicate with him. So that things can happen to your life. Things, they just don't happen. They don't just happen. Per chance. Per accident. No, no. When I come to you, I pray for you. You get your healing. When you get your healing... When it comes from you to confess that I was healed in Jesus' name. If you can look at the, the story of Jesus always, all the time, he will pray for people, he will heal for people. And he will say one simple word, go and sin no more. Hallelujah. When Jesus said this word, go and sin no more, you are saying... From today on, believe in the power that has healed you. And this power must be in your circumference. If you can go back to the life that you were living, this power that is in your circumference, that has taken away the disease, that has made you to be whole again, that has made you to be free again, this power will run away. And believe you me, if this power can run away from you, it means... The presence of the Lord is no longer there closer to you. That witch who was witching you will come back and witch you again. That problem that was troubling your life will come back and trouble you again. Now it means, I'm trying to explain. Everything in this earth, in this world. There is only one thing they are afraid of. Is the presence of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, the presence of Jesus takes away all problems. The presence of Jesus takes away all diseases. The presence of Jesus takes away all sicknesses. Hallelujah. Now where we have read, Jesus was going on doing whatever he was supposed to do. Now let us go and read the book of Acts chapter 1. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 4, 5 and we read again verse 8. Acts. Are we here all of us? Hallelujah. I want to explain going forward. But remember the heading is for with God nothing is impossible. Verse 4, can I read? And being assembled together with them, he was with the apostles. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. He was telling them. But to wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Can I repeat it? And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said you have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. And verse 8 says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, 
Jesus, after doing all these things he was doing to the children, to people in this earth, the time for him to leave earth came. Now, when that time came, there was nothing he has to do. Go back to the Father. Now, when Jesus wanted to go back to the Father, he saw his disciples. Yes, they were still there. Yes, they were still believing in him. Yes, they were still trusting that he's going to stay with them. But he then explained to them that I am going back. But now you, my disciples, when I leave you, you must go to Jerusalem and tarry and stay there. Stay there until you are baptized by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Stay there until you are filled by the Holy Spirit. And now this thing that Jesus told them, it is because many a time and most of the time the disciples will ask Jesus, on which authority are you doing this? Why are you able to do this? There was an instant where Jesus sent them to go and cast a devil or a demon. But they were unable to. And when they were unable, when they come back, when they told him, he just went there and casted the demon and it went away. Now they were concerned. They wanted to know, why can we not do it and you are able to do it? That is why Jesus said to his disciples, when I leave you here, what you are supposed to do, you must go to Jerusalem and stay there. When you stay there, the day will come that you are going to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Now when you are filled with this power of the Holy Spirit, the things that I was doing, you are also going to do. There is a purpose that we have been given as children of God to do what Christ was doing. The sick must be healed. The broken hearted, the heart must be mended. The problems, the troubles that people are having, they must be taken away. But children of God, we cannot take away all the problems of these people if we have not yet been endured by the power and in our circumference there is the presence of the Holy Spirit. We can claim to have the Holy Spirit and say things. But when the Holy Spirit is there, we will see by the works. Can you tell the person that is close to you, works? What type of works am I talking about? I am talking about the sins of people being taken away. I am talking about cancer being healed. I am talking about sugar by diabetes being healed. I am talking about blood whatever being healed. I am talking about all these problems being taken away and we live as free, free Christians. Why? Because for with God, nothing is impossible. If the presence of God is there, God himself is there to do everything. In other words, when we are with God, we no longer do things on our own. We allow God to do them for us. Eh? That is why Bible, when the Bible says it, it does not say, Listen to me clearly. It does not say you will be filled by the Holy Spirit and you will be the one to heal people. Does it say so? No. It says the Holy Spirit will come upon you and when you are filled by the Holy Spirit, you will be able to do the works that I, the Father, want you to do. Why? Because of the Spirit that is inside you. That is why Jesus told his disciples to go and wait. Yes, they were supposed maybe to go and run around and try around to do what Jesus was doing. But they were going to fail because in their circumference, the presence of Almighty God was not there. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close, do you have God in your circumference? He cannot be there in your circumference. I mean closer to you. 
if he's not there inside. Am I right? Hallelujah. In other words, children of God, we are failing God. Why? Because we do not allow the Holy Spirit must come and stay in our circumference so that whatever we say by our mouth will come to pass. Why? Because it's not us who does it. It's God who does it. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? We are failing each and every day. Our problem is we don't have him in our circumference. He is not there closer to us. He is not there working with us. Hallelujah. He is not there working with us. The Bible says Jesus told his disciple to go and wait until they are filled. Until that day when the Holy Spirit came and filled them. The apostles always they were sitting in one place, always praying in one accord, in one heart, believing that one day God is going to pour the Holy Spirit to them so that they can then go out and do and minister and do what God is, has said they have to do. So let me explain something before I go out. Go forward. When you have this thing, this man, Holy Spirit, that the apostles were waiting for. You don't fear anything. When you have the Holy Spirit, when you reach a place where there is a problem, problem must run. When you have the Holy Spirit, even if when you reach a sick person, you don't believe it's you, it's God who's going to... I will tell you, it's not me, now, it's God. I'm just going to lay my hand on you and God will do his job. I get it. Why? Because it's not me who's doing it, it's the Father himself who's doing it. The only thing, the only, only, only thing that I have to do as a child of God is allowing God to be here in my circumference. Allowing God to stay with me. And you cannot ever allow God to stay with you if you don't stay in the word. Lin Chi. Huh? You know, these days that we are living in, we are living in a time of, what do you call it? Internet and technology and everything. Hmm? Now, when we are living in this time, I suddenly is no longer the word that is speaking in our spirit. It is now the things that are found in the internet that are speaking to our spirits. When you read the Bible, this is what I found. When I read, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is what I have found, Banaba Papa. When I read that verse, when it entered my spirit, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. For me, it might mean the Lord is my shepherd. He's always with me. I will never be afraid of anything. Mara for mama, Abba Ibala. When mama is reading it, and it says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Mama might be saying, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall never be sick again. And the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I will get promotion in my work. Are you hearing me? That's what the word of God does in the life of people. Now, this time, the time that we are living in, we are no longer living by the word of God. What we love to do is, we love to quote verses that does not speak anything to us. When you have the word of God, I love speaking the word of God. When you have the word of God, it must do something to your spirit. And when this word of God starts to do something in your spirit, I am telling you, when the devil sees you, he must run. When disease sees you, it must run. When problem sees you, the problem must run. When trouble sees you, the trouble must do what? Must run. Why? Because you are untouchable. There is fire close to you. Why? Because of the word that is inside. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Can you ask the person that is close to you, is the word found in you? The word of the living God. Okay, let's go forward. Now, after Jesus has explained to his disciples and told them to go and stay, the Bible said they went and stayed where they were told to stay in Jerusalem. And they waited for the promise. And one day, as they were sitting waiting for the promise, the promise came. The Bible said they were praying together. They were in one room. They've closed the doors. They were praying. As they were praying, that person they were promised came. And when the person came, it fell on top of them. When he fell on top of them, the Bible says, they started speaking in new tongues. And when they start speaking in new tongues, the Bible says, when they came out of that place, remember, when Jesus was about to be crucified, they were hiding. Hmm? Do you know why? The Holy Spirit was not yet in them. That was the problem. So now after they were filled with the Spirit of God, the Bible says, they went out and started doing whatever that Jesus was doing, not with fear. Never They were not even afraid of death. They were not even afraid of people. They were going around doing that which Christ taught them to do. The Bible says they will touch people and people will be healed. The Bible says, come and read here, because of their shadows, some people will get healed. That is why I say this your circumference. It means when I get closer to you, the demon that is in you must feel the heat. And when the demon feels the heat, it must come out in Jesus' name. When the spirit of the Lord is there in my circumference, I don't need to suffer. This man, the apostles, they were very, very strong. That is why even when the time of being killed came, they didn't even mind it. Petro said, don't crucify me like my master. I'll better face down when I'm crucified. That fear was gone. When that spirit comes to you, in your circumference, fear must run away. Pride must go. Selfishness must go. Jesus must be the one that is ruling in you. And when Jesus is ruling you, there is nothing that will be impossible for you to see. Why? Because you are moving with the anointing of God the Father. Can somebody say hallelujah? We need the anointing of God the Father. When you have God the Father, you don't struggle. Eh? You don't do what? We are struggling a lot because we are doing things on our own. We are struggling a lot because we are looking at the things that are happening in this world. I believe if I am here in this house today ministering the word of God, there are people that have been sent here today so that they must come and listen to this word today. Even though I'm not speaking strong language or strong English, the matter is they must get what they are supposed to get today and when they leave, they will be free and free indeed. When you have anointing of the Father, you don't go by majority. You don't go you don't go by what they say. You don't go by what they do. You don't go by what they think. You go about what the Spirit of the God says to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now in Luke chapter 1 verse 37, I'm not going to read it. The Bible says, For with God, nothing will be impossible. For with God, nothing will be impossible. When you are in the circumference of God, 
when you are in the presence of God, when you are doing things according to the presence, you know, it's sweet to be in the presence of God. Even when trouble comes, you don't talk too much. Problem I fit you just look at it and say, Father, Nangu. When matata comes, when problem comes, you don't suffer because you know that there is somebody greater in you who is bigger than the one that is in the world. Now when this problem comes to you, when you feel your leg is not like walking, you know you have this pain, you just say, Father, look. And if you can say so, let me tell you. The Bible says, for with God nothing is impossible. The heavens come down. Whatever that is happening, you must run. Why? Because somebody bigger has come. This is what we do now these days as Christians. When we have problems, we shout and we scream and we bind and we cast. You don't need to bind and cast. Let me tell you what you have to do. Allow the presence of the Lord to be present in your presence. And when the presence of the Lord is present in your circumference, when anything comes inside that circumference, <laughs> something must happen. If you can place a magnet here, a big magnet, everything that is metal here will come running to the magnet. Am I right? Now, the anointing of the Father is like magnet. So now, but this magnet that we have, it does not call demons in it. It makes them to run. Whenever this magnet is here, I'm feeling the magnet right now. Whenever this magnet is here in Chinese Missionary Church, every demon must run. Every problem, or oh, it must run. Every disease must run. Every sickness must run. Every problem that you are having, trouble that you are having, it must run. Why? There is a magnet in this place. The only thing now that you need to do is to believe in the owner of the magnet. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close, do you believe in the owner of the magnet? There is a magnet in Charis Missionary Church. I don't know if you know that. And this magnet, it works always. Tell the person that is close to you, it works always. Now, this is a day. This day, the 2nd of September. It's a day where the magnet that is in Charis Missionary Church is going to repel every demon, every sickness, every problem, every trouble, every delay, every unjust thing that is in your life to run away and to go away. Why? Because the presence of the Almighty God is in our circumference. If you have his presence in your circumference, and I also have his presence in my circumference, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, when we come together, ah, there must be an explosion. Hmm? There must be an, option, an explosion. Why? Because we are many, and all of us, we have the circumference, the covering of the Holy Spirit. Can somebody say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, right there in the book of Luke chapter 1, as you go down with it, it speaks about Elizabeth. It speaks about Elizabeth also, who was barren. It's now with child. It was an angel speaking. For with God, nothing is impossible. I don't care how long you have been barren. Barren, I'm not, give, I'm not speaking about childbirth only. Barren in everything. Hmm? Because now when we hear about barrenness, we think about ladies. No, no. We are also barren. There are things we want to reach, we cannot reach. Huh? There are things we want to touch, we cannot touch them. So now the Bible says, 
Also Elizabeth, who was called barren for many, many, at his old age, she is with child. Because of the presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, when God is there, everything is possible. When God is there, anything can happen. Hallelujah. Now, because God spoke through his angel, Elizabeth was then found with child at her old age. Can you ask the person that is close to you, where are you barren? And allow the person to answer you. Where are you barren? Can you ask again the person that is close to you, where are you barren? In that your barrenness that you are talking about, with God nothing is impossible. That barrenness is going to leave you today in Jesus' name. That barrenness is going to be repelled by the magnet of the Holy Spirit today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every problem that you are having today is going to run away. Why? Because when the Holy Spirit came that day, he came for all of us. That is why he is still present even today. That is why he is still working in our lives. Even today, he has not left yet. He is still right here with us now. The only thing that we have to do, run away from sin, believe in him. In your circumference, the Holy Spirit will be fine. And when the Holy Spirit is found in your circumference, every demon that comes your way, it must run. Every problem that comes your way, it must run. Every trouble that comes your way, it must run. Why? Because in your circumference there is fire. Auna masunzi yono dzura petu na muriro. There are no ends that stays closer to the fire. When you see in your life there are a lot of cockroaches and zimbenjerere na madongororo. I know many of you didn't hear me. When you see a lot of cockroaches and millipedes and centipedes just running close to you, it is because there is no fire close to you. If there was fire, they were supposed to run away. That is why when you are still saying this one, another one came. When you are solving this one, another one will come. When today we have prayed for you for this one, tomorrow you are coming for another one. Why is it benjered the carbon? It is satuwi. Why these millipedes and centipedes are not running away from you? I mean, giving an example to these ones because they run away from fire. When they see fire, they run. Am I right? So now we have been told that we are filled with fire. Filled with the Holy Spirit. His presence is there in us. But why these ants and cockroaches always crawling beside us and walking beside us? It means there is something that is not right about our fire. It might be a fire of this, uh, uh, you know what, milly mill. Do you know the sticks of millimil? I don't know what they are called in English. I'm sorry. I'm not English. But Araribone, if you are having a fire of matanga, Mulo wa matanga upezina five minutes. What do we call matanga in English? So that others will understand me. I'm sorry, some of the things I don't know them. It's not a sin not to know they all, everything about English. What do you call them? Hmm? Greens. Greens. Oh, reeds. Oh, reeds. Reeds in the tanga. Okay. But they are the same. Their fire does not take long burning. If you can go to the bush and find grass, let me give an example by grass. And you say, I want to cook. And you made a fire. When you made a fire, that fire you have made, you put a pot of porridge. Do you know porridge? 
Porridge takes 30 minutes to cook. Or so. Or 45. If you are slow. And you took grass and you put there and you say, I'm cooking porridge. Your porridge will be uncooked because that fire will, will, will go away within five minutes. You won't even finish cooking your, your porridge. So now the fire that we are having, Renaba Naba Papa, Manabanjati, fire of green grass, of brown grass, fire of grass, it does not take long. Right now we are in the house of God, we are hallelujah, praising the Lord like never before, shouting for him like them, but when we go out of this house, that fire is gone. And now when that fire is gone, Angeri is the fire of grass. When it is gone, when trouble comes, trouble comes to you, it does not run away from you because there is no fire. If you can light up coals, Malasha, when you made fire, after they have burned for a long time, after they have made flames and everything, they will be left being red. For a very long time, they will be just red. Hmm? You can lead it now, it will take the whole night and it will go out maybe in the morning. That's the kind of fire we must have. The kind of fire that takes long. So that we may be able to stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now when that fire is there in our circumference, it is so easy for God to then work in our lives. Hmm? God now is not able to work in our lives because fire is not there. God runs to a place where there is fire. God does not run to a place where there is fridge. Cold storage. No. God runs to a place where there is fire. Malasha. Red ones. That's where God runs to. And when he comes there, when he goes there, there must be a change in your life. And when you call him, when you shout the name Jesus, things happen. When you shout and call him and say, Father, Abba, Father, here I am. He comes running to you to assist you in whatever you are searching for. The secret here, children of God, is the fire in our own circumference. If we have the fire of God in our circumference, diseases will never stay with us. Problems will never stay in us. That asthma of yours will never stay with you. That high blood pressure of yours will never stay with you. Why? Because in you there is fire. Now, if in you there is cold storage, cold storage, cold storage, I just see you return, cold storage. They went there, they put in meat, which is dead. Am I right? And when they put meat which is dead there, they are trying to, trying to preserve it so that it can take a long time so that we can come even next month and eat it. Hmm? Am I right? Now, when you are in a cold storage, when you are in a cold storage, you become so cold to an extent that even diseases, they, when they are in you, they are not visible. They are waiting for a certain time to come out and become visible. That is why we talk about Namutu, you will see a person. Because this person is in a, in a cold storage, the person will start just going down and down and down and down and down, down. The size coming down. When you ask this person, no, I'm dieting. Can't you? Uh -uh. Appetite is gone. That's the problem. Why? Because everything is cold. It has been preserved for the future. When people are talking about it, they say there are some diseases, diseases that surfaces when you become old. You have heard it at here? So now I believe that if I have the fire of God, there is no cold storage in me for any disease to surface when I reach 50. When I reach 60. No, no. Why? Because I have fire in me. There is fire that is always burning. I'm always active in the Lord. I'm always speaking the presence of the Lord. I'm always...
always, always manifesting in the presence of God Almighty. Hallelujah. Now when you have the presence of God, children of God, nothing is impossible for God to do it for you. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you, for God to work in you, in you, the presence of the Lord must be in you. Tell the person again, the presence of the Lord must be in you. So that God can come and work in you. God cannot come and work in you when his presence is not there. What is the presence of the Lord? The Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit is there, it is easier for God to come and work. Sometimes we don't need even to invite him. He just come on his own. The minute we open our mouth and say, Papa, oh, he comes. When you open your mouth and say, Age kofana, na, wait, you need one page. He comes. When you are there alone in your room, when you sit down and you start praying your silent prayer and say, Father, look at me. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made by you. I am an example of the child of heaven. When I walk, I believe heaven is working. I, we are too. He doesn't even take time. Do you know why you have a connection with him? Networker, I showed it. The network is always there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is with you, are you there in the circumference of the Holy Spirit? Is the Holy Spirit there beside you? Are you walking with the Holy Spirit? Let me finish my story. In the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 48 to 52. The Bible says when Jesus was walking around, a blind man was healed. Can we just go and read it? The story is so amazing. Mark 10, 48 to 52. Are you here? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you here? This is the story. It says, then many want him to be quiet. This is a blind man. They were telling him to be quiet one because he was shouting, son of David, have mercy on me. But he crowded out all the more. Munao weleja. The reason is he has heard that the presence is passing by. He was not yet having the presence of the Lord. But he heard that there is the presence of God that is passing by. Hallelujah. Now because he was not seeing, he cried out very loud. And said, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And listen to what they say. Then they called the blind man saying to him, Tabahe, be of good cheer. Arise. He is calling you. And this man throwing aside his garment. He rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, What? Do you want me to do for you? Hallelujah. The blind man said to him, Rabboni, Rabbi, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Go your way. Your faith has made you well. And it says immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus. On the road. Hallelujah. Just so worry, Jesus is saying unto this man. Go your way. Samaya. 
Your faith has made you well. Your faith has healed you. What kind of faith is it that Jesus is talking about? Joe Jesus is talking about the faith of shouting the more when people were discouraging him. The faith of shouting the more when people were saying you are making noise. When Jesus said your faith has made you well, it was a faith of shouting the more when people were speaking about him things that he was under. This man was under attack. He was blind. He could not even see. But now by just mere hearing that the presence of the Lord is passing. He never saw Jesus. He just heard by his ears. And he heard people making noise passing by. I believe he asked one of the people and said, who is passing? They said, there is this man called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now this man, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you know what he does? He heals people. He touches people and they become healed. You know, the lame will be walking. You know, those that have problems, the problems will be running away. Those that have lepers, the lepers will be healed. You know, those that cannot walk, they will stand up and walk. This is the man that we are talking about. He said, hey, opportunity. I know now, because of the multitude of people, this man cannot see me. Because there were many people along the road. He said, I might not be seeing. I might not be seeing the road. I might not be seeing this man. But I've got something that I can use. I have a voice that I will shout with. I will gonna use my voice. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The problem that I ha I'm having, you don't know what I'm coming across. Sometimes I'm palidi joja ubola, limbaka kuri akibon. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Sometimes I hear that the food that I'm eating is not good by the smell. I just eat because I'm hungry. Now the opportunity has come. I have to use this opportunity. Son of David, have mercy on me. They said to him, you are making noise. You don't know this man that you are, we are talking about. This man is of higher class. This man walks with people of higher class. This man is untouchable. You cannot go close to him. But he said, I've got a mouth. I'm going to use the voice that God has given me. Even though I'm not seeing. Even though I cannot stand up. But the issue that I will do, I'm going to scream. I'm going to shout. I'm going to call him. And when I call him i know he will hear me and i know if he can hear me my problem is over yeah. now you you are seated there with the problem you are just shy because of people you are just shy because of your little status you are just shy because of this thing that hey, let me tell you when need comes you have to shout like a crazy person you have to scream like somebody who's crazy why because if this opportunity can pass you by you don't know when the opportunity will come back nothing it's impossible with God. But before God does that miracle to you, you must attract the anointing. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Attract the anointing. Attract the anointing. This man was not saved. He was not saved. He just heard by the ears. Maybe he just touched one of the people that was passing by and asked, what's going on? There is a lot of noise. They say, hey, you don't know. I wish you could see so that you can see this man. Hey, this man that is passing is so amazing. He can heal the sick. He can heal the blind. The lame are walking. Oh, those that have problems, the problem are running away. 
I'm telling you children of Charis today, this is your opportunity. He is passing by. Don't allow this opportunity to pass you today. If it needs you to shout, you must shout to the top of your voice. If you need you to stand, you must stand right now. If it needs you to do something, you must do it right now. Why don't I allow this opportunity to pass you by? Why? Because the presence of the Lord is present right now in this place. That demon that is with you, it must run away in Jesus' name. That problem you are having, it must go today in Jesus' mighty name. The disease that you are having, it must run today in Jesus' name. The trouble you are having, it must go today in the name of Jesus. The joblessness you are having must come out today in the name of Jesus. Why? Because for with God, nothing is impossible. Now we have the grace, the anointing is here. Everything is here. Everything must happen today. Why? Because the anointing is there. Yeah. Hallelujah. <coughs> the only thing we need is the anointing. Can you tell the person that is close to you? The anointing. Yalabasi television. We need the anointing. Salvation is not salvation without the anointing. Baba mama na no re anointing kubula la kama lime reko wuche wana mama. Even though you cannot speak in tongues, as long as you can feel inside that there is a baby you are taking care of, there is the spirit of the Lord from the inside. Even though you cannot do the things they are doing, but you yourself you know from the inside that there is fire that is burning each and every day of your life. Now when this fire is there in your body, it will attract everything that is good that is coming from the Lord. But everything. That is coming from the devil must be revealed. He must run. They must run. They must run. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is close to you? Your demon must run today. Your problem must run today. Your trouble must run today. The fire of the Lord is in this place. The Bible says, For with God nothing is impossible. When he enters, every door that is closed, it must open automatically. When he enters, every disease that is there must run away automatically. When he enters, if you are jobless, you must get your job automatically. You don't have to want you don't have to ask yourself questions why the presence of the Lord is there yeah. I love what the Zulu people say they say oh, ne Zulu. I don't know why they call it Zulu but I love the way they talk it they speak it when you are born again you walk with the heavens oh, ne Zulu. You walk with the clouds of glory. You walk with God himself. When you walk, you always say, I am with the Father. I am with the Holy Spirit. For me, nothing is impossible. When I say car, car walks from the garage and it comes where I am. When I say house, I call only once. And I lungo vaso phone abalwa. Why? Because I have the presence of God with me. We need to know what we have. Hallelujah. Those words were not written for Mahala. For with God nothing is impossible. So now what I'm talking about, I'm explaining to you the things that will make the presence of the Lord to work in you. So that you can be able to stand for with God and say for with God, nothing is impossible. I was jobless for 10 years and I came to the house of grace. When I reached this house, everything in my life changed. I was zero. Now I'm something because of the grace. Why? Because the presence of the Lord is in this place. So most of you here, things are not happening in your life. You are not really born again. If the fire of God is with you, you will never lack joy. 
you will never lack peace. You will never lack happiness. You will never lack fulfillment of life. Why? Because the presence of the Lord is there in your circumference. You enjoy life each and every day. In whatever you want to do, you feel, I have to do it with God. So God is willing to change each and every person's life today. But you have to be ready. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you tell the person that is close to you, you have to be ready. Yes. All the problems that are there in your life today, they must run away. There is nothing that is impossible in with God. Everything is possible. If you need a car, the car can fall from heaven now and fall into this place. The problem is, when it reaches earth, it won't be a normal car. That is why you have to go to the garage. Am I speaking the truth? If you want a job, it's not an issue of there are not jobs in, in heaven. They are there. The problem is the jobs that are in heaven are not the same as the jobs on earth. So if you need a job, you must find the circumference of God so that the, your job can come here on earth. If you are sick, it's not an issue that God cannot heal you. Uh-uh, no, no. God is willing to do it for the issue is you must allow the presence of the Lord to be present wherever you are. So that God can be able to deal with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to accept from the Lord? Our God is willing to change our situations today. Our God is willing to give us whatever we want today. Because the Bible says for with him nothing is impossible. I have searched and checked everything. And I found out if you have God, everything is possible. Is that that God will give it to you in his own right time? Hallelujah. But the only thing that we have to do as children of God, let us call, invite the presence of the Lord around you. So I want to ask you a question. In Jesus Diseases are healed. Sicknesses are healed. Troubles are rebuked. Demons are rebuked. Problems are shafted away. Everything is taken away. They are repelled by the anointing of God himself. Now, if you want God to work in your life, for with him, nothing is impossible. He can do it for you today. Hallelujah. Can you tell the person that is God can do it for you today? I know there are many of us here who are discouraged. Don't be discouraged. I know there are others who doesn't want to see their house of the Lord anymore. You are wasting your time. In the house of the Lord, that's where life is. There are others that don't even want to see the building of Charis Missionary Church. And, hey, you are wasting your time. The grace that is here is too much. Oh. You know the grace that is in this place. It does not need even you to enter. When you just look at this beautiful building, you coach the grace. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I have heard many people saying, since when I entered through that door coming into this place, my life has changed. Let me tell you, there's a theme that is working in this house. God of Israel, God of Abraham, God of Jacob, God of Isaac is ruling in this house. The minute you step your foot in this place, nothing is impossible for you to get. Nothing is impossible for you to have. Nothing is impossible for you to accomplish. Why? Because the presence of the Lord is here. The only thing that is needed from you is that do you allow the presence of the Lord to rule in you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we ready to pray? Can you ask the person that is close to you, are you ready to pray? The last verse that I want us to read, or the second last, let me just quote it for you, you'll go and read it home. In Mark chapter 5, verse 22. That's where Jairus' daughter was healed, was raised from the dead. When you have God, everything that is in you must be raised. If you have a dead liver, it must be raised today. If you have a dead leg, it must be raised today. 
If you have a dead heart, your heart must be raised today. Hallelujah. The last verse that I want us to read is in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. That's the last one. I want you to reason about it. It says, Glory to God. Jesus. Eerie, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, mm, all these things shall be added to you. Say hallelujah. The Bible says, seek you first. When? If you are here today, you want a change in your life. The first thing that you have to search for is the kingdom. Eh? If you are here because you are sick, let me give you an advice. The first thing that you have to seek is the kingdom. And when you have found the kingdom, you have found the anointing. When you have found the anointing, nothing is impossible in God. And the Bible said all these things. All. Can you tell the person that is close to you? All. All these things. I don't know to you that what, what all means. Now for me, what all means is means beauty, nice shape, nice figure. All things beautiful. Eh? Bible say all. Mama Shonja is one of them. Even Maudwana is one of them. Eh? The Bible say all. Nama Shonja ngangomu. Nama do we young and go more? Huh? Everything that you desire in life, that's what the Bible says. Isn't it? If you desire to eat, I don't know what you call them in English, whatever. Mupani wens. All is fine also in them. If you desire to eat meat every day, all is fine there. If you desire to be healed, all is fine there. It is not for specific people. It is for everyone that have the presence of the Lord. It is not for pastors and prophets and evangelists and bishops and apostles only. Mm -mm, yeah, nah. It's for every child of the living God. Hallelujah. Can you ask the person that is close to you, do you want the presence of the Lord? Do you want him to work in your life? Do you want him to do something today? Do you want that problem to go away from you today? If you are believing and you want that problem to go away from you, can you stand up on your feet?